готова. Трансляция тоже идет. Угу, у нас еще. Да. Да. да, можем подождать буквально. Да, можно еще прям буквально, наверное, одну минуту или две на подождать. Скажите, презентацию видно, все в порядке? Да, все видно. Угу, прекрасно. Ну что, тогда можно начинать, наверное, да? Да, думаю, да. Uh -huh. Хорошо. So, dear friends, welcome to the next webinar of our course Understanding Russian. Webinars for students from African countries who are learning Russian language. Uh, at webinars, we talk about life in Russia. And my name is Yekaterina. I work in St. Petersburg University. And greetings from St. Petersburg. Right now, I'm here. Today... We're going to talk about the fourth topic that is called holidays in Russia. And we will talk about what holidays we celebrate and what symbols we have and what dishes, what meals we eat. And of course, we will talk about the gifts that we give to each other during the holidays. So let's start. We hope that after our webinar, you will better understand uh, why your friends from Russia sent you exactly such strange, maybe sometimes strange pictures, postcards for holidays uh, via in WhatsApp. So what kind of holidays we have in Russia? The whole country celebrates state holidays, or we can also say public holidays. They are associated with the historical events, famous people, important political dates. The most important public holiday are usually weekends, so we don't work during these days. Religious holidays are associated with the region and uh, like with the religion that exists in our country. Uh, personal and family holidays uh, are events that are very important for a particular person, his family or his friends. Professional holidays uh, are days when different professions people of different jobs celebrate. Uh, for example, I don't know, like professional holidays, we can name uh, Teacher's Day, Builder's Day, etc. Uh, there are more than 700 holidays in Russia. And don't worry, we don't have weekends for all these days. No, just for several of these. Uh, and of course, we're not going right now to talk about all these holidays. But we will talk about the most important one uh, and we will show you how we celebrate them. So if you come to Russia, not if, let's say when you come to Russia and you will like study Russian language, explore Russian, or if you have any friends from Russia, so you understand what uh, holiday is now it is and what people are supposed to do during this holiday. So, if you are learning the language, like any language, not particularly Russian one, you need to know its culture, right? Linguists say that it helps you to learn the language faster and better from the one hand. And from another hand, you just, for example, uh, once to talk about the holidays, you just need to know when it is the weekend in the country. So when people don't work and when you can rest too. Um, also, the offices always have a production calendar, and you can see, for example, for business, you can see on the slide, it's official days you don't work. Uh, so, and such a calendar for each year can be found on the internet. Once you write down in the productive calendar for Russia 2023, you will find out what particular days were not going to work this uh, month, this uh, year. 
Well, we already said that statistically, it's about more than 700 holidays in Russia. People, believe me, don't know all of them. And weekends are only for public uh, holidays and maybe some traditional and religious holidays. So here you see the list of the holidays, the list of actually public holidays. Okay. And these days will definitely would be weekend. So we will not work during these days, like the 1st of January, 23rd of February, 8th of March, 1st of May, 9th of May, and so on. You can have a brief look at these holidays. Maybe some of these holidays you also celebrate. Uh, well, as for religious and traditional holidays, we need to say that Russian is a secu secular country, right? So this means that we don't have a, some particular state religion. In fact, there are four, there are four major religious in Russia and a lot of different like uh, small religious also. Uh, the majority of Russian people of course are Orthodox. Uh, this is about 74 percent, 74 percent of the country's residents. There are a lot of religious religious holidays in Russia and all of them of course are important uh, for the particular people that uh, believe in this religion. Uh, but we will only be able to tell about some holidays, uh, that we will talk about some specific holidays, because these holidays are like a very symbolic one, and they, they have the bright symbol of our culture, and you will definitely see in Russia, or in the internet, or in social networks, how Russian people celebrate these holidays. We will talk about, we will talk today about Christmas and some also Muslim holidays. Uh, we hope that this information will be useful for you uh, and you'll be able to celebrate an important day, an uh, important holiday, like yourself and with your Russian friends, and you'll feel comfortable uh, in the company of Russian friends and once you're in Russia. Uh, it's very difficult to find all the traditions and some like very specific things in the internet yourself. That's why we prepared for you this webinar. Yeah. Um, so remember that even uh, in Russia, you are a foreigner and foreigners can not know anything. And Russia, Russian people will not always be able to tell you everything they know. For, for us, it's some things that we know from the birth, you know, from when we were born. So that's why we particularly made this webinar for you. Well, Let's talk just, let's say a few words about personal events. In Russia, we usually celebrate personal events that are like, that's uh, very important for some particular person. It can be a big purchase. For example, you bought a new apartment or some change in your life. And maybe you moved or you, I don't know, like, got engaged. Uh, so also maybe you rent an apartment or you bought the one or you bought a new car. So this is very important events in Russia. And you, of course, you need to congratulate person with this. Uh, we gather together with family and friends and we eat together, we drink wine and say uh, some spe specific words for this. We, we even have um, some very interesting words. We call it abmyvat. Abmyvat can be translated like to wash. And once, for example, someone buy uh, buys a car and other people say well you need to wash it that means you need to prepare a table and to buy alcohol and so we need to celebrate this so we kind of need to wash your new car uh, the most important uh, personal holiday in russia of course is the birthday uh, birthday is celebrated by both children and adults and uh, we all know when our relatives friends and colleagues have a birthday it's very important to remember it uh, so we celebrate birthday with our family with our friends and colleagues on your birthday you need to congratulate your person not on your person like on like someone's birthday you need to congratulate the person with the birthday uh, if it's your friend or a member of your family it's uh, good to give him a gift 
uh, the main uh, symbol of Russian, not, not, I don't think it's like Russian tradition, but like the main symbol of all birthdays parties is of course a big cake and Russia is not an exception. Sometimes we light candles on the cake. Uh, well, on my cake is too many okay, candles. That's why, for example, I don't prefer to do it on my cake. Um, so these candles, you know, you need to blow uh, down, you need to blow out. Uh, and when you do this, you, of course, need to make a wish. Uh, by the way, uh, in Russia, there is a tradition never tell the wish to other people in case you want it to uh, come true. A birthday card usually also looks like this. For example, you can buy balloons, flowers, a cake, uh, and the like. Postcards and cards are very bright and multicolored. And this is also, I would say, it's it's important not just to present a gift, but also to present some kind of card with some really nice words in it. Uh, what do we do on our birthday? We invite guests uh, to home, maybe to a restaurant. And at work, we bring the cake and something delicious, maybe. Uh, the cake is, make sure this is very important, the cake is often bought by the person who has a birthday. So if I have, I have a birthday and I go to work, to the office, I buy the cake and I give this cake to my colleagues. Uh, sometimes uh, colleagues can do it too, of course, it, but it would be a very nice surprise. Yeah. Uh, what should I say if a person has a birthday? Or we need to say, Znyom Rajdenia, that actually says happy birthday. Uh, well, birthday is a personal holiday, right? But sometimes the whole country celebrates the birthday of the famous person. On uh, like 6th of June, Alexander Pushkin was born and this holiday, yeah, and this is a holiday in Russia, a big holiday, and we all celebrate uh, his birthday. This is a very special day. We call it Pushkin's Day, or Pushkin's birthday, and the day of the Russian language. By the way, who is Pushkin, and why do we celebrate the day of the Russian language on his birthday? Maybe some of you know this, but I will just remind you that Pushkin was born on the 6th of June in uh, like 1799 in Moscow and died, unfortunately, in February, on February the 10th in uh, 1837 years in St. Petersburg. Uh, in his short life, only 30 years, uh, like he was only 30 years old when he, he was dead, uh, he has done he did actually a lot. He did a lot. Pushkin changed the Russian literature language. He wrote his books in the usual Russian language, I would say in the spoken Russian language, which uh, like all people use. Because before, writers were trying to make it more very high poetic language to use once they were writing the books. But Pushkin just used a very, very understandable, a very normal language. Uh, so yes, we can say that before Pushkin, books were written in a very special, very difficult and old style Russian language. Uh, that's why not every person understood this language and many people were reading in French uh, because even they understood the French language better than like old, like very literature Russian style. So thanks to Pushkin, after the Pushkin, literature became understandable. And people in Russia began to read a lot. So we can say that he's kind of the grandfather of the like Russian literature, and uh, not literature, but Russian literature language. And by the way, his grandfather of like Pushkin's grandfather was from Ethiopia. So we know that in Ethiopia, Pushkin is very well known. So the 6th of June, we celebrate the day of the Russian language. Why do we celebrate it and why it's very important for us? In Russia, people really love the Russian language. We are very proud of it. We believe that it's beautiful, unique, and we're very happy when foreigners study it. So even if you know one word in Russia, believe me, all Russian people would be very happy to meet you. Uh, so we talk about Russian language a lot and very often. Uh, so, but on the 6th of the June, we talk about Russian language especially. Statistics show uh, that Russian 
is uh, like uh, Russian language is in the fifth place in the world in terms of demand. Experts of the Pushkin Institute of the Russian, like experts of the uh, Institute of Russia of Pushkin Institute of Russian Language, uh, analyzed uh, various uh, parameters of the usage of the whole, like the worldwide uh, spread languages, and that's what they found. You can see that on the slide. You can see that uh, in Russian, uh, about like. 5% of the total number of all websites is written. So it takes, Russian language takes the second place in the number of websites on the internet. Russian is also on the 10th place in terms of numbers of usage of the internet. Uh, in the world, the Russian language ranks fourth in terms of the number of organizations in which it is spoken uh, or official organizations. One. The Russian language ranks fifth uh, in the number of publications in scientific database. Russian is ranked seventh in the world in terms of the number of mass media. And on the eighth, in terms of the number of the number of the speaker speakers here on it, and also in the world, so really we can be proud of Russian language. Ah, you can see on the graphic, or uh, the information looks like this: the Russian language is a thick green line. Above it are English, Spanish, Chinese, and French. You can uh, find this uh, research in the internet if you want to, and uh, to learn more about the place of the Russian language in the world. So let's talk about the holidays. Uh, our main traditional and all like public holiday, uh, I would, yes, I would say it's the main holiday in Russia, the holiday that all people love most of all, it's of course New Year. In Russia, the New Year is celebrated on the night of the December 31st to January the 1st. What do we usually do? Well, on December 31st, we gather with family and friends at the table. A New Year's TV show, some like old retro movies. Uh, the president always gives a speech on TV and congratulates Russian people. If you don't have a TV, you can watch the broadcast on the internet. And you know, this is kind of with it, without this video, you never feel that New Year uh, has become. So first you need to see the president saying you congratulations and okay, okay, now it's New Year. And so at uh, midnight, we listen to the uh, Kuranty uh, in the Kremlin in Moscow. You can see it on the slide and there is a photo. It's this clock, a uh, big clock, and this is the sound like boom, boom, and it's about 12 uh, sounds. So the new year has come and this particular moment once we are listening to the shims in the kremlin in moscow we drink champagne and in the new year's eve we give each other gifts children receive uh, gifts from not the santa claus actually we called him dead maros you can see him uh, on the slide and dead maros is a little bit different from santa claus uh, the main symbol of Russian and I think it's like widespread uh, symbol of New Year is a Christmas tree. We call it Yolka. You can see it also on the screen. Uh, we decorate Yolka Christmas tree. Uh, and we have Yolka in almost in every house in Russia. And uh, let's talk a few more words about Russian Santa Claus, Dead Maros. Uh, he's an old one. Actually, Dead Maros can be translated like the father of Frost. Dead grandfather, Maros, Frost. So the grandfather of Frost. He's a very old grandfather. He has a long fur coat and a bag. And there are gifts for children in the bag. And he has a granddaughter. Uh, we can say snow maiden. Uh, in Russian, this Snigurechka. Snigurechka. And uh, sometimes they walk together to the kids. So kids waiting not only for Dead Maros, but also for Snigurechka. Uh, and the uh, shins on the Kremlin Tower in Moscow are also a symbol of the New Year. This is an old clock. This is Kuranty. It's a very old clock. It plays a melody that everyone in Russia knows. Uh, so 
you can repeat after me if you want to learn some new Russian words. Dead Maros, Yolka, Snigurichka, Kurante. Ura. Ura. <laughs> okay, so what we eat on New Year? Oof, it's hard to tell you about this because I'm a little bit hungry now. And even if I wasn't hungry, I would definitely would be very, very hungry because of only talk about this delicious and this beautiful salad. So we have, we have various dishes on our table. We have meat, fish, uh, we have vegetables, fruits and desserts. We drink champagne, as I said, and wine. But actually for the New Year night, it's supposed to be champagne. Uh, the main dish of the holiday is salad Olivier. Olivier. You can see the recipe on the slide, by the way. The main fruits are Hungarians and oranges. We also eat various um, delicious stuff. In the photo, you can see a typical Russian table for the new year. Uh, there is food and fireworks too. Uh, Olivier, Olivier, we pronounce it Olivier. Olivier is a dish that uh, appears in Russia during the uh, USSR period. Olivier is a salad. And sometimes we also call it Russian salad. It, in other countries, you can also find it as a Russian salad. Uh, this is very high, like it, there are a lot of calories in it. So it's a very calorie uh, salad, but it's really good to eat in winter. Uh, you can see what products we use to cook the salad. We use like potato, we use sausage, chicken or a chicken, green peas, ear egg, onion, mayonnaise. By the way, all Russian salads are prepared with a mayonnaise. Oh, we can say that we celebrate the new year in Russia twice. Oh, yes, this is also a very specific thing about Russia as a country. We have two new year. Why? Uh, well, we have on the 14th of the January, we have an old new year. Stary Novy God. Just imagine the holiday old new year. What is this? Uh, this is before, uh, the revo before the revolution, 1917, uh, we had a different calendar. And we celebrate now the old new year according to the old calendar, you know? So Russian people love so much holidays that we even use two calendars, the new one, and we celebrate new year. And we also celebrate according to the old calendar, the old new year. It, we need to say it's not a, such a big holiday, but... You know, we still can gather together uh, and have the like dinner and have the table like uh, totally covered by delicious things. And we can also celebrate this holiday uh, with friends. Well, next holiday, we call it Dzień Zashitnika Otechestva the day of defender of the fatherland. We don't say motherland, for us it's a fatherland. On these days, on this day, uh, men and women of the military are congratulated. They are given gifts by relatives, friends, and colleagues. So we usually call this holiday just simply 23rd of February because it is celebrated on this uh, date. The symbols of this holiday are military and state symbols. For example, on the slide, uh, on the slide, you can see a postcard that we usually uh, use to congratulate uh, military people. And on this postcard, there is a Russian flag on it. There is also a red star uh, that is also the symbol of the holiday when it began to be celebrated back to again US USSR period. By by the way, we also need to say that. Um, originally, this is a military holiday, right? But we can also celebrate, like, congratulate all men, because like all men in Russia are regarded as defender of our country. That's why even if it's uh, I don't know teenager boy, we can also like congratulate him as a future defender of all people of our country. And just almost in one month. It's a women's day. So just, you know, these two holidays, like men's day, military day, we celebrate uh, and we congratulate the men. And just in one month, we celebrate women's day. Uh, and this is the first spring holiday. The whole country loves them. Uh, we usually call it simply the 8th of March. 
On this day, all women are congratulated in Russia. Uh, it's especially important to congratulate the uh, elder woman in the family, like mother and grandmother. The holiday has a really long history. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was a day when they talked about women's rights and emancipation. Now in Russia, this holiday has become a woman's holiday and it's a bit like Mother's Day in Europe, we can say. And also I need to say that it's not about, we don't have such strong focus in uh, Russia about this emancipation and women's rights. We just celebrate this as the holiday of woman, of the beautifulness and so on. Uh, on March the 8th, uh, women are given gifts and the flowers. Also very important to present us flowers. This is a spring holiday. So the symbol of spring uh, of this holiday is uh, spring flowers. They are usually tu uh, tulips, you can see uh, on the slide, and mimosa, the yellow one uh, above the tulips. In warm countries, a mimosa is a tree or a bush. In Russia, it grows only in Sochi or in Caucasus. During the Soviet period, mimosa became a symbol of uh, this holiday, uh, and they're not very expensive flowers. That's why it's really easy to, and actually, it's also easy to take it and to uh, to bring it by transport. And this is also very important. How many flowers do we present? In Russia, only an odd number of the flowers are given. For example, you can present one, two, five, seven but never two, four, six, and so on, never. Because this actually like two, six, and so on would give for the funeral. Yes, so please don't forget this once you want to sleep, uh, to congratulate women. Uh, we usually uh, have one more spring holiday and uh, we call it the 1st of May, or it's uh, the Labor Day. This is a very old holiday that exists in many countries of the world, in modern Russian. Russia, this is a day when people relax, watch some concerts on the main square of the city. And this is also another one tradition. Uh, on the 1st of May, we Russian people usually go out uh, to the countryside, to the nature, and we have some kind of picnic. So one more holiday is a victory day. Uh, it's one of the most important holidays in Russia. On this day, people remember their relatives who participated in the Great Patriotic War. Um, on like it's uh, from the 1941 to 1945. Uh, on the 9th of May, military parades are held in the cities. Uh, the parrot on Red Square in Moscow is usually broadcast on TV. You can watch it in the internet if you want to see how it looked like. Also in Russia, the Immortal Regiment March uh, takes place in different cities. Uh, you can see the photo also on the slide. People walk along the central street of the city and carry portraits uh, of family members who died uh, in the war or who just participated in the war. Yeah. Of course, festive concerts are also held on this day, and in the evening you can see fireworks in the cities. The symbol of the holiday are the dates of the war, the numbers, and the uh, Georgian ribbon. Uh, you can see it also on the screen. It's uh, yellow and black colors. Uh, this all these are the symbols of the patriotic, the Great Patriotic War. Not so long ago in Russia, new holidays appeared. We call it Russia Day, like it's the 12th of June, and uh, National Unity Day, the 4th of November. By the way, it was just recently. Uh, these days, people relax, spend time with friends and family. The symbol of the holiday is a traditional flag of Russia. Uh, we already talked that uh, Russia is a secular country, secular country, but we have different religions. There are four main religions in Russia: it's Christianity, Islam, uh, Judaism, and Buddhism. Uh, but today we will talk about holidays that may be relevant for those who come to us from African countries. We call Christian uh, churches by the word temple, uh, церkev. Uh, you can see Orthodox. Church, Catholic, and Protestant. The Muslim temple is called the Mosque Nichet. Uh, 
you can see churches and mosques, uh, mosques that are located in St. Petersburg. The temples have information about holidays and services. Uh, now many temples have a website, so there you can find out information about uh, like the working hours and so on. There is sometimes a shop near the temple. Uh, you can buy books, items for religious ceremonies. Near the mosque, there is uh, sometimes a grocery shop uh, store with traditional clothing. Sometimes there is a restaurant or a cafe with traditional cuisine near the temples. So we celebrate Russian or Orthodox Christmas on the 7th of January. So 6th of the January is a Christmas Eve. At this time, people gather with their family for a dinner. The Orthodox have a fast at this time, so they prepare dishes without meat. January the 7th is the day when the fast, the fasting uh, has already ended and meat dishes are prepared for the uh, dinner. On the night, uh, from the 6th to the 7th of January, a service is held in the church. Many people go to the church. Uh, so in the big cities, transport works all night. Christmas is a very family holiday in Russia. This is one of the main holidays of the church calendar. Symbols of the holiday are star uh, figures of Mary and Joseph and the Christ uh, child. In the photo, you can see a um, Christmas card. There are symbols and also the photo on the right, uh, it uh, was taken in the Orthodox Church. So one more time, first we celebrate uh, New Year and then we celebrate Christmas. Not like in Europe. In Europe, first Christmas, then New Year. But in Russia, first we have fun during New Year's night and we have presents and we're waiting for kind of Santa Claus, Death Maros. But after this, we will have Christmas. Uh, Russian Catholics and Protestants celebrate Christmas, of course, on the 25th of December. Uh, festive services are usually held in churches. Christmas, um, like uh, you can find some um, preparations for the uh, for this uh, holiday. But we need to say that preparations for the new year also begin in November. So this means that by December 25th, you will already be able to find the Christmas tree, candles, and other necessary things. On January 19, uh, Russian people celebrate, uh, we can say, the, the, the baptism of the Lord or the Holy Theophany. Uh, Catholics celebrate this holiday on the 6th of June. Uh, what we do during this holiday, the Orthodox tradition is uh, that you need to go and to do some bathing. In the photo, you see people bathing in icy water on a cold winter day. They don't swim, no. They just get into the water and out of the water very quickly. A church service uh, is being held at this time. Bathing places are prepared in advance. And doctors are always uh, are ready to help you during this ceremony. Not all people are bathing for this holiday, only those who feel that they are ready for it. For example, I never did this thing, but I'm really, really impressed by my friends who do this. Uh, in the church at this time, people also receive holy water. Another holiday is Muslim itself, literally butter week. Muslim means butter. It's a traditional holiday. It's included uh, in the religious calendar, but it's not a church calendar. Muslim say, is a week in late February or early March. It's a spring festival. You are, uh, you are seeing of winter. So you say goodbye winter. We have you for a long time. So we're preparing for the spring. Uh, the date changes every year. Maslenica uh, la, like, is uh, going for one week, so it's kind of not one particular day, but the whole week. We are doing what we are doing during these seven days. We eat pancakes, go to visit family and friends in the parks. Children and adults can enjoy some uh, like activities and have fun. In the photo, you see a large figure uh, that's burning in the fire. This is a figure uh, like symbolize winter. Uh, we put this figure on the street for the seventh day and children play it around her. And then we just burn it. So this is the way how we say goodbye winter. 
Uh, the main dish for Maslenitsa is pancakes. And uh, like all week, uh, all these seven days, you can uh, uh, you can eat the pancakes and they are prepared at home. They are in all restaurants, cafes and so on. Uh, in the photo, you can see pancakes. They are large. And aladi. Aladi, it's a small one. It's a little bit different. They cooked a little bit different. And so we have two types of pancakes, small one, aladi, and big one, pancakes. After muslins, the Orthodox begin a like, big, great fasting period. So at this time, people are strictly limited in food. They don't eat meat, milk, eggs, fish. This uh, fasting period after muslins lasts for 48 days. So muslins is the last opportunity for you to eat a lot meat and other stuff after this you need to wait 48 days and after this you will have easter orthodox easter easter is another important and big holiday in russia easter is celebrated by orthodox catholics and protestants but all these religions have uh, easter at different times easter is usually in april or may in russia every year the date is different what we are doing during the easter in church calendar each day has its own meaning but you will probably notice such days in russia the thursday before easter is called clean thursday on this day, you need to clean the house and cook Easter food. Friday is called Good Friday. This is a like very strictest day of fasting, and believers go to the church. Saturday is called is called Holy Saturday. Easter dishes are brought to the church, and after the service, they become holy. And on the night from Saturday to Sunday, uh, there is a service in the church. On Sunday morning, the family gathers at the table. But the family gather uh, at the table and eat some uh, Easter dishes. On this day, uh, like the fasting period ends, so we can eat meat and other stuff. Therefore, we eat eggs first. So um, other Easter dishes are kulich. Kulich. Uh, one of my students said that this kind of Russian muffin, big muffin. It looks like muffin, the big one kind of cake but specially cooked coolidge and also we uh, like drink some special church wine very sweet uh, and easter it's a court dish these dishes are prepared at home but you can buy them in the store we also paint eggs at home to paint eggs you can use a special paint but there is a traditional way to paint the eggs, uh, it's onion hucks. The eggs will be red, and uh, you can see this red eggs painted naturally uh, on the photo. Uh, during this holiday, we say to each other, Christos Vaskrias, that means Christ is rising. And of course, some like Muslim holidays are celebrated in Russia. You can find out the details of uh, in the mosque. They are different uh, in the different cities. For a foreigner in Russia, that it's important to know what the holidays are called in order to ask questions in the mosque, as well as to tell friends in Russia about the holidays. Two main holidays, Eden, Eid Abha, and Eid Al Abha. As you know, these holidays have different dates uh, every year. We pronounce the name of the Eid Al Abha holiday in Russia. Is that like this the name of the post in russia sounds ramadan um yeah so uh eight al in russia we say so is another important holiday celebrated in russia since the sacrifice is made on this holiday you need to know in advance where the ceremony will take place and what rules apply in the city where you live in general muslims in russia observe the same traditions as in other countries but there are features of the climates in it some special features of the climates in addition representatives of different religions live here and our city are also big uh, all this affects the traditions of the russian russian religion when you are preparing for the holidays, we advise you to ask your like friends uh, to share their the experience. There will be students from your country at university or in your city or one of your uh, like friends studied with you. It would be useful to get information from them. In the photo, you see a mosque in Moscow and there are lots of people around. In Russia, there are lots of people in cities for all the big holidays. This means that the transport will will be used by a different schedule. 
And it's important to plan your route in advance. If you don't know the city very well, uh, this will help you. Uh, there are more than 180 people in Russia that there are at least six major uh, major regions. Uh, for students from Africa who come to Russia, some things may be important. Uh, so Muslims can buy uh, halal products. You see how this word is spelled in Russian, halal. Uh, in a special store and at the market or in supermarket, it's also important for Christians that there are, during the fasting period, there are also special shops in the restaurants you can find this food. Um, uh, so you can see that we all even have some post name menu that means the special menu for fasting people. Uh, so this is very traditional holiday table in Russia. So you can see we have a lot of things on the table. Uh, what kind of holiday food we have? As we said already, it's olivier uh, and other salads. And of course, it's a red caviar, it's chicken, it's fish, it's fruits, uh, and some delicious stuff, uh, desserts, and so on. And of course, we drink wine, like alcohol, like usually wine, and of course, Russian vodka. Uh, we also use uh, fork, knife, spoon to eat things, but you can eat by hands chicken, bread, and some other stuff. What presents we need to give? Uh, like choosing a gift is always very difficult and it's very important to present something very nice and sweet. Uh, typical gifts can be chocolate, books that people like, um, unusual tea with some special flavor, also very good uh, gift. Scarf, for example, flowers definitely for a woman. But please be careful that these gifts are not welcome. Uh, we have... It's a very bad tradition. It's We never present, uh, for example, knives and other sharp objects. And we don't give uh, salt shakers. Also, we not give a hand uh, kerchief, a watch and uh, pearls. Uh, this is kind of the bad symbols in Russia. So we can become enemies. We can cry the pearl as a symbol of cry in Russia. So be very careful. These things are not supposed to be given as a gift. And when we congratulate friends, there are lots of ways to say your wishes and congratulations. So happy holidays, uh, Spraznikam. You can also say in Russian, uh, happy holidays. And you always need to wish something. For example, Zdarovye, that means healthy. Lubvi, uh, love. Uh, what else? Shastya, happiness. Yeah. Uh, and so on. So please, it's not only about happy holiday, but some wish also supposed to be. Счастье, любви, здоровья, здоровья, успеха, радости. So this is the end of our webinar. Uh, today we talked about how different holidays are celebrated in Russia. And our next topic going to be education in Russia. We will talk about how to get an education in Russia and how and where foreign students can study here and what students from Africa usually study in Russia. So this is for all. That's uh, all for today. Thank you for your attention. Let me very fast check the questions. If there were some specific questions, let me look through them. Mm -hmm. oh, about the, um, what's the story behind why we give some particular number for funerals honestly speaking i never thought about this and maybe there is there is some specific tradition but uh, i don't i'm not sure that everyone knows this just to have this separation that there is flowers for bad occasions for funerals and there is flowers for good occasions and it's somehow to differentiate so one three five seven good occasions two four and so on for bad occasions uh, but I can look for it and maybe next time I will tell you. Yes, uh, the 25th of December is not a weekend in Russia. 
Yeah, someone even like we were passing through examination. Okay, I guess we talked a lot. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Uh, maybe one question. Okay. Um, yes. I, I see very good stuff with the Russian people, which is um, which I like, and uh, like for example, food, uh, something like caviar. That uh, that's uh, very expensive. I mean, is this for um, upper class Russians or? Uh, Every Russian can afford that lifestyle. Uh, what, what do uh, ordinary Russians eat? For example? I see. Of course, red caviar, we're not eating it every day. Unfortunately, I wish I can. But, you know, once a year for New Year, we can give this money, you know, like it's uh, we uh, once we have a holiday, we think that this is a special day and we can sacrifice our money a little bit. We were saving the money for the whole year and we want to celebrate in year. So yes, for special occasions, red caviar you will find on the table, but not during the like every day. But but what what does what do ordinary like ordinary Russian what do they eat like? I mean, uh, for the example, uh, students. Um, Olivier, or... Olivier, the salads, uh, meat, chicken, fruits. The same things that I was showing to you. The same, actually, like, olive oil like, is very expensive to cook. The farmers also eat those ones. The farmers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Ezra. What's the question? Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, Ezra. Uh, Ezra, you need to open your microphone. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, yeah, that, that was very good inform, uh, presentation, I said, and it's very informative and easy to easy to follow. Uh, at, at the beginning of your, your presentation, actually, you mentioned, um, yeah, there, there, there is two types of holidays in, in, in the Russian Federation. The first one is the national holiday, and the second one is the uh, private holiday, right? So the interesting part of this is like whenever you have a holiday, you invite uh, someone, you know, I mean, your friend or someone you just uh, loved one, of course. My question is, is it a must thing to do to take some kind of a gift whenever you are invited? Is it a must thing? Like, a, is it a mandatory? That's a good question, Ezra. That's a very good question. Um, for example, if... Um... It's not, for example, if it's a birthday, of course, you're supposed to take some gift for the person. If yeah. it's not the birthday, if you go as a guest to some party in Russia, to a Russian company or friends, it's good to take some something with you. For example, you can buy sweets, you can buy cake, you can buy a bottle of wine. We say something for the table, что так столу. Mm -hmm. That's it's uh, we say it's not good to come with empty hands. It's very bad. Uh, it's not obligatory, but still we don't feel okay if we come with the empty hands. You need to take something, at least maybe some fruits, maybe some even you can write down to your friend asking, like, do you need something for the table? Maybe some salami, some nice cheese, some expensive cheese, even red caviar would be a very good price, I mean, like for the like for the table. So yes, you should come with something. I see. Yeah, that's, and especially that's... also if they have, for example, if the family you're going, they have children. Definitely, yeah. you need to buy some chocolate for the kids, chocolate or some sweets for the kids, just to show your attention that you not just came and to say, okay, I want to eat, give me some food. No, you show also your attention to the people. Yeah, that's that's really nice. And uh, yeah, uh, one thing that I really want to mention as well, when you when you talk to Pushkin, you just uh, mentioned his ancestor. It's rooted back to Ethiopia, and that really makes me proud because I'm from Ethiopia as well. And um, yeah, it's my first time when I hear it. And uh, yeah, the, the other thing, can I can I just add one more question, please? Sure. Yeah, uh, you also mentioned actually the when it comes to the um, yeah the religious. Uh, the religion in, in the in the Russian Federation, I think the seventy four you you say seventy four percent is Orthodox Christianity, and the 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 rest um, twenty six percent is other other religion. But when I see 
everything which is going on in the Russian Federation at the moment is like everything is like people people are living uh, uh, without any hustle, like without any problems. Mm -hmm. and, and when I compare to with my country, because we have like 45 to 55 percent when it comes to the Christians and Muslims, but we have really a lot of problems. So I know it's not really a good question, but I was just uh, wondering to, to have some to, to see your thought, like how, how do you guys ma manage to just, you know, make people live like in peace? <laughs> you guys have like different <laughs> and, uh, that's and a very yeah. interesting question and um i guess i don't think that's uh, like right now it's a topic topic of discussion yeah. but yeah. uh i guess soon we'll have also religious uh like topic too we will talk about religion so yeah. and yeah we will try to um, uh, tell you how it's but yeah that's uh you need to combine all these different uh, religions exactly. nationalities and language all together in one country yeah. That's why it's really hard to to rule our country. Okay, thank you so much for your questions. If there is no I, I, I know the, the time has gone, but uh, let me just jump in with the one more, please. Uh, uh, you didn't talk about, uh, we, we hear so much about vodka. You didn't talk about vodka in Russia. Do Russians uh, take vodka or is it just a theory? That's one. And uh, the lady at the language testing center, is that Dubinina? Because... Uh, I get uh, a lot of emails from Dubinina. I, I would want to know, please. Thank you. The question is, do we drink vodka? Yes. Do do Russians uh, like enjoy drinking vodka or is it just a theory? Okay, because, I, will, uh, I will give very short answer. Yes. <laughs> we, <laughs> we love it so much. <laughs> okay, so... Thank you so much. We want to talk a little bit more about this particular one uh, issue also uh, further. But yes, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for your feedback, for participating in discussion. See you next Monday as usual. Have a nice day or evening. До свидания. Спасибо. До свидания. До свидания.